Ladies and gentlemen, the following segment of the podcast is presented exclusively by Hillsdale College. For over 175 years, four purposes have defined Hillsdale's mission, learning, character, faith, and freedom. Thank you for listening and my sincere appreciation to our brothers and sisters at Hillsdale for their great sponsorship. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. America, Mark Levin, our number is 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. I want to thank Richie Z, the great WPHT, my hometown of Philadelphia, for filling in last night. It's Yom Kippur, so I was at services last night and today. But today's going to be a hell of a show, all three hours. In addition to everything I want to get to, we have... Julie Kelly in the second hour, where we're going to talk about so many of the individuals from January 6th and the conditions they've been held in. We have a Washington Compost propaganda piece from our buddy Philly Bump, who's a liar, who cherry-picks what I say, because that's the nature of journalism today, corrupt through and through, including that clown. And again, uh, Joe Biden gave a speech, turned around and walked out in front of the press. You would think the press has had enough of it, but apparently not. And um, um, we want to talk to Larry Kudlow in the final hour about how Joe Biden wants to destroy your jobs, destroy your pension, destroy your currency, and massively increase inflation. In your name, of course. And he says the top 1% barely pay any taxes. The top 1%, according to the Tax Foundation, pay 40% of the federal income taxes. The guy just can't help but lie, and he is a liar. Two issues I want to hit real hard right up front are this attorney who was indicted in the law firm uh, that's been in the center of so many of these uh, very serious issues, as well as Millie, and uh, what is the job exactly, the role of the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, 10 U.S. Code, Section 163, tells us, and I want to delve into it. It's not just a matter of him conducting himself out of the line of, uh, of, uh, of authority. What kind of authority does he have? Now, the, uh, the Defense Department is leaking to its favorite reporters, trying to spin this thing. You can see Kirby and Milley and all the other surrogates doing everything they can to tell you this was no big deal. It was a big deal, if true. Moreover, I've been pointing out now for four, what, since Tuesday on Hannity, and you can see that the, uh, that the plagiarists out there, both verbal and uh, written, had picked up on it. It's a good thing they have. Uh, why would Bob Woodward and Robert Costa sit on a news story for days and days and days if this, in fact, is true? What you have here is the fusion of a corrupt senior brass at the Pentagon and a corrupt media. And the nation suffers as a result. You saw in Afghanistan, you saw the lies we've been told in the last several months. American citizens, American green card holders by the thousands as well as American allies and Afghan patriots who fought with us by the tens of thousands, all stuck behind enemy lines, and they're hunting down our allies and killing them and torturing them. And our government cannot tell you if or how many American citizens have been killed. Shocking, really. Absolutely shocking. But I want to start with this. This is from The Hill, but it's in a wide variety of news reports, a federal grand jury indicted attorney Michael Sussman on a charge of lying to the FBI during the 2016 campaign, making the second prosecution brought by John Dorham, the special counsel, tapped by former President Trump to investigate the FBI's probe into Russia interference. He was tapped by former President Trump. The guy is a civil servant. He's been a federal prosecutor for decades. The indictment alleges that Sussman, an attorney at the firm's Perkins Coie, and I want to get into that in a minute, with ties to the Democratic Party, misrepresented who he was working for when he presented evidence to the FBI in 2016 of a link between the Trump Organization and the Russian financial company Alpha Bank. Now let's stop there. 
He was planning lies with the FBI on behalf of the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC. That's why he sought to cover up his footprints as to who he was actually working with. And this is really shocking. You know, on top of this Milley stuff, but what took place in the 2016 campaign, what took place in that campaign is absolutely shocking what was done to this president. At the Department of Justice and at the FBI, working hand in foot. That's right, foot in the mouth with the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC. And, of course, the corrupt American media. Prosecutors in Durham's office say Sussman falsely claimed to investigators at the time that he was not acting on behalf of a client when he had actually been representing Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign and an unnamed tech executive. So this guy goes to the FBI. He goes to the general counsel of the FBI because he used to work at the Justice Department. He knows his way around. And he says, I've got stuff you're not going to believe. Well, who are you working for? Uh, a tech, a tech, uh, you know, IT. Sussman's false statement misled the FBI general counsel, says the indictment, and other FBI personnel concerning the political nature of his work and deprived the FBI of information that the, uh, let's see here, that might have permitted it more fully to assess and uncover the origins of the relevant data and technical analysis, including the identities and motivations of Sussman's clients, the indictment reads, his clients being the Clinton campaign. You know, all roads lead to Hillary Clinton. The FBI investigated the allegations, determined there was insufficient evidence to link Trump's business with Alpha Bank. And the former special counsel, Robert Mueller, did not address the issue in the report of his investigation. And it goes on. Now, the Perkins Coie website has scrubbed Sussman's name from their website. They've scrubbed it. Oh, he never existed. But he was a partner, a top partner in that law firm. Why does that law firm matter? Well, let me bring you up to speed on another matter related to that law firm. I've talked about this guy, Mark Elias, with you before. He was the bag man that gave the money, ultimately, that led to the dossier, which was a lie which the FBI used to try and take out Donald Trump, which the media gladly used too. Remember all that? This same law firm was the pass-through, or effectively laundering the money to try and protect the Hillary Clinton campaign. So while this lawyer, Sussman, working for the campaign in the DNC, trots in the FBI, covers up who his client is, tries to plant dirt, on Donald Trump to get the FBI to investigate Donald Trump with Russian ties. The same law firm with attorney Mark Elias gives money to the another firm which was involved in the development of the dossier. This was the whole Russia collusion effort to take out Donald Trump candidate, Donald Trump president. And this law firm was ground zero. Now, this is from Joe Shopstall, Fox News. A top Democratic lawyer uses a massive dark money network to push voting rights, so-called, and restricting lawsuits across the country. A setup that a government watchdog said would provide nearly unlimited funding. Mark Elias, who has become one of the most influential liberal attorneys in Washington, recently departed the Perkins Coy law firm to start the Elias Law Group. But he did most of his dirty work, in my opinion, while he was with this firm. Elias's firm will focus on electing Democrats, supporting voter rights, and help progressives make change, according to a Perkins press release. But before departing the heavyweight firm, used by an extensive list of powerful Democratic politicians, Elias positioned himself with several groups tied to a dark money juggernaut. That would help in efforts to push back against the likes of voter ID and restricting lawsuits across America. Now, Elias, in July 2020, registered Democracy Docket, LLC, a site dedicated to acting as a hub 
for opinion, advocacy, and information on voting rights, elections, and redistricting. Virginia business records show. As part of the efforts, Democracy Docket Legal Fund, led by Elias, was created. The Legal Fund is a fiscally sponsored project of the Hopewell Fund. Look at all the layers. A nonprofit managed by Washington consulting firm Arabella Advisors. Arabella managed funds act as a conduit for deep-pocketed liberal donors to stealthily bankroll numerous left-wing groups. These are the sleazeball, these are the bottom feeders that use millions and millions of dollars to attack our, our national system, our constitutional system. Now it manages three separate funds in addition to Hopewell, the 1630 Fund, the New Venture Fund, and the Windward Fund. You need a chart to figure all this out. Now wealthy Democratic donors use these funds to pour cash into dozens of initiatives that fall under Arabella's umbrella. You have to wonder how much was poured into California. According to the network's most recent tax forms, the four funds combined to haul in $715 million in cash from secret donors in 2019 alone. Meanwhile, the Democrats, you see, will attack Republicans for dark money. The Democrats, you must understand, are evil. They're diabolical. $715 million in cash from secret donors in 2019 alone. The group also pushes money to outside organizations that do not fall under its auspices. In addition to Democracy Docket, Elias created the Democracy Docket Action Fund to raise money for voting rights lawsuits. Now, of course, voting rights is a pejorative in this case. They don't mean voting rights. They mean um, voting fraud. The New York Times reported this last year. According to an Act Blue donation page, the Action Fund is a project of the North Fund, which also boasts connections to Arabella Advisors. That's at least five groups now set up, front groups. The North Fund reported $9.3 million in donations in 2019. Its sole donor was the 1630 Fund, one fund laundering money to another fund. The Arabella Managed Group's tax form show. Sarub Gupta, who's listed in the North Fund's tax forms as general counsel, is also general counsel for Arabella Advisors, according to the consulting firm's website. So they set up all these groups to try and cover up what they're doing, to move funds around, and you can see the incestuous nature of this. And you and I have no idea what's going on. The effect on elections, the effect on, on money flowing into these Democrat candidates and causes. Mark Elias just launched his new firm. But what's not been reported is the funding source for his lawsuits, Americans for Public Trust Executive uh, Director Caitlin Sutherland told Fox News. Mr. Elias frequently raises money money for the Democratic Docket Action Fund. But what he isn't telling his loyal followers is the fund is a project of the Arabella Connected North Fund. So we have the North Fund connected to the Arabella group, connected to... Uh, this this democracy docket group. Sutherland said the North Fund is shadowy, even by D.C. standards. That's the mothership, apparently. And his other group, Democracy Docket Legal Fund, is just a project of the Arabella-managed Hopewell Fund. All of this together means that as Arabella advises dark money attorney, Mr. Elias will have access to nearly unlimited funding to file lawsuits across the country. That's how they changed the rules, in part, for the 2020 election. And you have a blowhard like Chris Christie at the Reagan Library spewing stupidity and carbon dioxide and methane all over the place. He doesn't have a clue what's taking place. George W. Bush and his cadre, they don't have a clue what's taking place. These never-Trumpers, including the clowns in the House and the Senate, no idea what's taking place. They wonder why Donald Trump tweeted, why he was angry, why he was pushing back. We wonder why the rest of them weren't. I'm not done. You need to hear more of this, America. I'll be right back. Hillsdale College serves four purposes. Learning, character, faith, and freedom. 
Now, education and faith thrive in freedom, and freedom requires an educated people, a people of good character to preserve it. Hillsdale College has been providing the education needed to preserve free government for over 175 years, and it continues to provide that education today, not only to its 1,500 undergraduate and graduate students, but nationwide. Through its free online courses, its support of classical K-12 through charter schools, and its other outreach efforts on behalf of liberty. Hillsdale's Articles of Association, dating back to 1844, commit the college to preserving the blessings of civil and religious liberty through the provision of sound learning. This learning includes the Constitution. It includes the laws of nature and nature's God, as described in the Declaration of Independence. It includes America's great heritage and liberty that too often today is falsely derided and denied. Hillsdale's motto is, Pursuing Truth and Defending Liberty Since 1844. And it'll continue to fight to live up to that motto, come what may. Learn more. Go to levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. For all their talk about billionaires don't pay their fair share, it is billionaires on the hard left that are funding this panoply of front groups. These are front groups that are set up under the Internal Revenue Code, to avoid as much transparency as possible. And they have raised hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. They have a variety of front groups. I know this is complicated. It is. In order to create this this, uh, Rube Goldberg complicated uh, grouping of organizations set up by these lawyers in Washington, D.C., And Elias didn't respond to Fox for a comment, but as Elias acted as Hillary Clinton's top campaign lawyer during the 2016 election, he pushed a multi-state challenge against voter ID laws. George Soros funded the efforts. Following the 2016 election, Priorities USA, one of the nation's largest super PACs, tapped Elias as it shifted its focus to voting laws. Soros provided $9.5 million to the PAC, during that election cycle, making him one of its most generous donors. Elias led the efforts from its connected nonprofit arm. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I am a bit furious with the Republican National Committee. I sat here behind this microphone time and time again and mentioned this guy, Elias, these, that there were front groups, that they were raising money. I didn't have the particulars, of course. But there were reports that they had up to 600 lawyers or law firms involved across the country, and the Republican National Committee never, ever prepared for this. Meanwhile, these groups have the ear of the media. The media provided with mar- them with marketing and mouthpieces. They have the Democrat Party and apparently the United States Department of Justice. This law firm, Perkins Coy, and this guy, Mark Elias, Hillsdale College serves four purposes, learning, character, faith, and freedom. Now, education and faith thrive in freedom, and freedom requires an educated people, a people of good character to preserve it. Hillsdale College has been providing the education needed to preserve free government for over 175 years, and it continues to provide that education today, not only to its 1,500 undergraduate and graduate students, but nationwide. Through its free online courses, its support of classical K-12 through charter schools, and its other outreach efforts on behalf of liberty. Hillsdale's Articles of Association, dating back to 1844, commit the college to preserving the blessings of civil and religious liberty through the provision of sound learning. This learning includes the Constitution. It includes the laws of nature and nature's God, as described in the Declaration of Independence. It includes America's great heritage and liberty that too often today is falsely derided and denied. Hillsdale's motto is, Pursuing Truth and Defending Liberty Since 1844. And it'll continue to fight to live up to that motto, come what may. Learn more. Go to levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. Mark Levin, radio's hell-raising intellectual. Call now, 877-381-3811. You know what I've been thinking about, Mr. Producer in America? I've been thinking about adding an hour to this show on my podcast, an original hour. What do you think of that, Mr. Producer? 
Think we can get millions and millions of podcast listeners? Additional? Think I can move near the top of the list? I think so. I'm definitely flirting with it. I just need, you know, another 10 hours in the day. But I'm really flirting with it. Because I find this three-hour period is just not enough. So we shall see. When I created Levin TV about six years ago, six years ago, I never dreamed we would grow into such a powerful force, an independent digital platform. Now more than ever, Levin TV on the Blaze TV network is exactly what we need to strongly resist the American Marxist ideology sweeping our country. And by the way, it looks like... That's, where is it here? Give me a second. Looks like the American Marxists are a little upset with me. JacobinMagazine.com. Mark Levin wants a new Red Scare. I'll deal with them later. Nobody's even heard of them, but I'll deal with them later. There's a couple ways to look at this, and they're not mutually exclusive. The vote in California was a disaster for California. It was a disaster for the people of California, those who want to be free, those who believe in private property rights, those who believe in capitalism, and those who want to be left alone. And so the enemy has taken over California. California is the bluest of blue states. So it was a huge defeat for those who believe in liberty in our form of government. Those who believe in tyranny and centralized totalitarianism, massive tax increases, open borders and the rest, you won. You won. And so California is now an ungovernable Impossible state. That's number one. Number two, I want to thank those of you who fought. You were the great patriots. Against all odds, you stood up. And you fought. And I've been saying behind this microphone for years, almost two decades, when people say, Mark, I don't think we can win. Or Mark, what do you think is going to happen? What do I say, Mr. Producer? Fight. Fight. No need to predict outcomes. Fight. Go on offense. Put them on their heels. And you did that. They ran scared, at least for a period of time. That's number two. Number three. The rest of the country saw what a bunch of racists and bigots the media the Democrat Party, and their surrogates are. They didn't want to run against substance when it came to Larry Elder. Instead, they tried to character assassinate them. They're disgusting. They only support African Americans who support them and who they can control. You want to think for yourself and you're a person of color? The Democrat Party wants nothing to do with you. A lot of lessons. Finally, Barry Goldwater had a disastrous outcome in 1964. And out of the Goldwater defeat came the Reagan Revolution. I don't believe there will be a Reagan Revolution in California. I don't believe in being a Pollyanna. I don't believe in misleading you. What's the point of that? But the rest of the country saw what could happen in red states, purple states, slightly blue states. They saw what could happen. That you can fight. And if you don't fight, you're going to be devoured. See, the Democrats want to turn the whole country into California. A one-party state, massive taxes, limited property rights, Attack on faith, open borders, pack the ballot boxes. That's what they have in store in two weeks in a federal bill. And so those patriots who fought in California, for the rest of the country who wanted to watch, some people on the the sidelines, this is what's in store for you. Because 
It's no coincidence that Pelosi's pushing this bill, and she's from San Francisco. They took the most beautiful city in the country, in my view, and they turned it into a crap hole. They took the most beautiful state in the country, in my view, and I'm not from California, and turned it into tyranny. That's what you can expect. That's what you can expect. All right, enough on that. 10 U.S. Code, Section 163. What does this have to do with anything? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to read from this. What we have found here is that when I comment about something or report something, it's regurgitated on cable, it's regurgitated on other radio shows. There's some stand-up people, don't get me wrong, but not enough. And so when I said on Hannity, I believe it was Tuesday night, that Robert Woodward, excuse me, that Bob Woodward and Robert Costa are unethical because they sat on, if they're right, a news story for months and months and months. Don't they work for the Washington Post? I hear this being regurgitated everywhere now. I thought it was an important point. That's why I raised it. And I'll continue to raise it. But I want you to listen to this because you're probably not familiar with it. I certainly wasn't until I looked it up a couple of days ago, but I couldn't get to you till now. 10 U.S. Code, Section 163, Role of Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. A. Communications through Chairman of JCS, Assignment of Duties. The President may direct the communications between the President or the Secretary of Defense and the commanders of the Unified and Specified Combat Commands be transmitted through the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. In other words, we have these various military services. And so he may direct that that's to be coordinated through the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for communications purposes back and forth. To assign duties to the chairman to assist the president and the secretary of defense in performing their command function. Their command function. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has no command function. He has no command function over the United States military. None. B, under federal law, the Secretary of Defense may assign to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff responsibility for overseeing the activities of combat commands. Such assignment by the Secretary of the Chairman does not confer any command authority on the Chairman and does not alter the responsibility of the commanders of the combat commands. Got that? You'll hear this tomorrow all over cable and all over radio. But I want to be the first to explain it, because this is what I do, research. It's abundantly clear that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has not been conferred any power of command authority of any of the military services. That's twice in Section A and Section B. B2. Subject to the authority, direction, and control of the Secretary of Defense, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff serves as the spokesman for the commanders of the combat commands. What else can he do? Evaluate and integrate information, advise and make recommendations to the Secretary of Defense with respect to the requirements of the combat commands individually and collectively, communicate as appropriate the requirements of the combat commands to other elements of the Department of Defense. So... His role is to coordinate. His role is to ensure communication up and down the chain and all around. His role is to serve the commander-in-chief. He has no combat authority. He has no authority over nuclear missiles. He has no authority over ground forces. He has no authority over conventional weapons. He has no authority over anything in terms of the command structure. Combat commands. You got that? Did you know that, Mr. Producer? So it's not just a question. Not just a question of the separation of authority between the civilian and military, which is crucial. Substantively, he has no 
specific combat command authority, period. Let me try this again. Let me read this again. The Secretary of Defense may assign to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs responsibility for overseeing the activities of the combat commands. Such assignment by the Secretary to the Chairman does not confer any command authority on the Chairman and does not alter the responsibility of the commanders, plural, of the commands. So what Milley is accused of doing is even worse. What Milley is accused of doing is seizing power in contravention of federal law as well as in contravention of the way our Constitution is set up. Now we turn to the Daily Wire. Former Acting Secretary of Defense Chris Miller ripped Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Milley on Wednesday over a report that Milley told his Chinese counterpart that he would warn the Chinese military if the U.S. and then President Trump was about to launch a strike. Now this goes beyond the violations of the Constitution and federal law, if in fact this happened, because now... What he's accused of is the willingness to alert our number one enemy. Should a decision be made by the commander-in-chief to take military action against our number one enemy, that he would warn them about it. That is treasonous, if true. The Washington Post reported Tuesday, based on revelations in a forthcoming book from Woodward and and Costa, you should boycott this book. Because these two clown reporters, even if we assume the information is accurate, sat on newsworthy information. This is what I've been saying for the last 72 hours. It's now being regurgitated by the geniuses on TV and radio. For months and months and months, which could have affected the outcome of Afghanistan, you have the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who is rogue. According to their own writing, he's rogue. Now, I'm going to predict that Woodward and or Costa will be on all the major Sunday shows, maybe 60 Minutes, the Sunday morning shows, hawking their book. This is what Woodward does. He drops stuff the week before his books come out. He stirs the pot, then they're pushed like hell by the news media. He has a lot of friends in the news media. Then they're pushed like hell on all the Sunday shows. I'm telling you to boycott it. Because no journalist should be sitting on news, if this is news, like this. With the nation in peril, with the nation's national security in peril. And you saw what happened in Afghanistan with the head of the Joint Chiefs, Millie. Milley was allegedly so worried that Trump would strike China that he called and told General Li Zhejin that the People's Liberation Army of the U.S. would not launch a strike, and if the U.S. did, it would not be a surprise. I want to continue on this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not one of these hit-and-run broadcasters, so stick with me. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. Hillsdale College serves four purposes, learning, character, faith, and freedom. Now, education and faith thrive in freedom, and freedom requires an educated people, a people of good character to preserve it. Hillsdale College has been providing the education needed to preserve free government for over 175 years, and it continues to provide that education today, not only to its 1,500 undergraduate and graduate students, but nationwide. Through its free online courses, its support of classical K-12 through charter schools, and its other outreach efforts on behalf of liberty. Hillsdale's Articles of Association, dating back to 1844, commit the college to preserving the blessings of civil and religious liberty through the provision of sound learning. This learning includes the Constitution. It includes the laws of nature and nature's God, as described in the Declaration of Independence. It includes America's great heritage and liberty that too often today is falsely derided and denied. Hillsdale's motto is, Pursuing Truth and Defending Liberty Since 1844. 
and it'll continue to fight to live up to that motto come what may. Learn more. Go to levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. From Millie, reportedly, General Lee, I want to assure you that the American government is stable and everything's going to be okay. We're not going to attack or conduct any kinetic operations against you. Folks, do you know who General Lee is, L.I.? The Washington Free Beacon did a report on this. He's one of the most aggressive hawks in the communist Chinese leadership, constantly threatening the United States, threatening to attack us or take us on. And so forth and so on. Do you you see how little real reporting the New York Slimes, the Washington Compost, and the rest of the corrupt uh, propaganda operations really are? General Lee, he says, you and I have known each other for now five years. If we're going to attack, I'm going to call you ahead of time. It's not going to be a surprise. So, Milley puts out this guy, Kirby, and others who are leaking and on the record and doing everything they can. This is no big deal. This is sort of what happens. You know, this is just the nature of the beast. So all these reporters with contacts at the top level of the Pentagon are regurgitating what's being told to them because they don't want to lose their contacts. People throughout Washington at think tanks and so forth who come on as special guests on radio and TV, same thing. They don't want to burn their bridges. And Millie's the uh, head of the Joint Chiefs, which, as you now know, has no role in combat decisions. He can give us advice, but no direct role in making those decisions. That's it. He can give advice to the president. And so this acting uh, defense secretary, what, for a couple of months, I guess, Christopher Miller, says the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is the highest-ranking military officer whose sole role is providing military-specific advice to the president. That's right. And by laws prohibited from exercising executive authority. The chain of command runs through the president, the secretary of defense, not through the chairman. Now Fox News reports said that their sources indicate the calls were not secret. That about 15 people were on two calls, which were allegedly, excuse me, don't regurgitate stupid, stupid stuff. Doesn't matter if 15 people were on the call, the president of the United States was unaware of it. Washington Post Josh Rogan says his source has said Milley did not properly coordinate the calls, adding that a senior agency official told him when Milley did these calls, it was with joint staff. Nobody from the Office of the Secretary of Defense participated in it. And Miller has since told Political maybe he said something in passing. Okay, it doesn't work that way. If you're going to call the Communist Chinese, you don't say something in passing, even if that did occur. So we need a commission now. Much bigger than the January 6th committee, a commission now to investigate, because Mr. Milley perhaps could have gotten us into a nuclear war of some kind of conflagration. God knows. But we need a commission. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. By the way... We have a great Life, Liberty, and Levin this Sunday on Fox, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you can't watch it live, please DVR it. You don't want to miss it. Two great guests. We're going to delve very, very deeply like nobody else can with two great guests. Not a conga line. Into the Millie issue and into the Bob Woodward and Robert Costa Washington Post issue. In ways you haven't heard yet. We're going to have the former chief of staff to the last Secretary of Defense acting, Kash Patel. He also worked in the Trump National Security Council. He worked for Devin Nunes. Brilliant man. 
In the second half of the program, my buddy Joe Concha, where we're going to break down the media too. Again, in ways that other shows, given their formats and so forth, they can't do it. So please stick with us Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. If you can't watch it live, you can always DVR it. Also, I wanted to tell you that American Marxism is now going to be published. Listen to this. We have requests from all over the world. In Brazil, in Greece, in Taiwan, in Albania. How do you like that, Mr. Producer? And we have inquiries from Hungary, Poland, Portugal, and Japan. So, spreading the word against Marxism. We get very little write-up on this, but it's very, very important. Also, we've not only been number one nine weeks in a row in the New York Times bestseller list, although you wouldn't know it, would you? We're at 965,000 copies in all formats sold. So we'll be at a million very, very shortly. That's you, the Patriots, spreading the word. I also meant to thank you. Last Sunday, Life, Liberty, and Levin, overall audience, was the largest for the weekend. Again, that's you. And our radio ratings are killing it. Through the roof. So you're engaged, I'm engaged with you, this is one big family, and we're doing everything we can, and we'll continue to do so. One other point, before I get to something that I want to hit, and that our guest, Julie Kelly, an expert on this January 6th, among other things, will talk to her. You know, the Free Beacon is another one of these wonderful sites. And they point out here that Joe Biden's COVID-19 body count hits 250,000. 250,000 in eight months. With three vaccines and therapeutics. This is why he's lashing out, ladies and gentlemen. You will remember that Biden used the death count in a sick, poisonous, diabolical, and evil way during the election against Donald Trump, basically claiming that he was responsible for every single death. While, by the way, he was praising Cuomo. But he tried to use that number, and in many ways did successfully with his corrupt propaganda media, to blame Trump for the deaths. Well, if Biden's comrades and propagandists who surround them have figured out is that they need to start early and say often that it's the fault of the American people who aren't vaccinated. It's the fault of potential Republican governors that might be his rivals in the next election, DeSantis and Abbott. It's their fault and the unvaccinated, quote-unquote, fault that people are dying. So when it is mentioned, that a quarter of a million Americans have died from the coronavirus during his watch. He'll say, it's not my fault. I've been saying over and over again, get vaccinated. I've been saying over and over again, wear masks. I've been saying over and over again, I'm going to use OSHA to punish businesses that don't do it. None of what he's doing is effective. None of it. None of it. Because the bottom line is deaths, not hospitalization, as we explained the other day, several days ago. Thanks, shockingly enough, to the Atlantic. But ultimately, it is Biden who is responsible for the 252,000 deaths. He promised he would shut it down during the presidential campaign. He had a plan. Now he's lashing out. He's lashing out with totalitarian edicts, violating the Constitution, violating state law. And I would say to my friend, who's the Attorney General of Arizona, I don't think your case is so weak. I don't think it's an uphill battle. But I might amend it to include information about the administrative law. The administrative law, which was violated, or will be violated, by OSHA and the Department of Labor in trying to in trying to put in place a regulation for which there is no statutory basis. Just a thought. More than a quarter of a million Americans have died 
from the coronavirus since Biden's been president. And under the Biden propaganda and the media propaganda, he's responsible for every single one. And while he can try and attack the quote-unquote unvaccinated, which include people with natural immunity, I started talking about this before anybody else. I've been looking for the numbers. The CDC doesn't have the numbers. 76% have now been vaccinated. That's almost 8 out of 10. Almost 8 out of 10. And the remaining 20%, many of them either don't need the vaccination, can't take the vaccination. Of course, some have chosen not to. But there, is, there are a number of people who already have immunity. And there are a number of people who have underlying morbidities that prevent it. What percentage of the remaining, I guess it's 24%, We don't know. And the CDC either doesn't know or won't tell us. All right, I've been on that before. But I wanted to point this out. This is nothing more than a brazen, calculated propaganda effort by Biden. Not only to take attention away from Afghanistan and the border, but to try and immunize himself, if you will, from the same attacks he used against Donald Trump that he's responsible for. But the border's open. It's open wide. We're going to have two and a half million, give or take, illegal aliens in this country by the end of his first year, none of whom have been vaccinated, as a matter of definition. None of whom have been vaccinated. And he won't take responsibility for that either. As a matter of fact, the CDC just put out an alert that many of the people brought in from Afghanistan, by the way, the vast majority of whom were not working with us, SIV visa holders and so forth, measles, Mr. Producer. We could have an outbreak of measles in this country now. Did you read that? It's unbelievable what this Biden, this stupid buffoon is doing to this country. All right. Speaking of stupid buffoons, you've heard me mock the easily mockable, if you would, Philip Bump, the national correspondent for the Washington Compost. Philip Bump is very obsessed with Fox. He doesn't like Peter Ducey. He's very obsessed with talk radio. You're the national correspondent. There's so many things you can write about, but Philip Bump is a true believer. Now, I once saw a picture of this guy, Mr. Producer. His head is as big as an oversized pumpkin. Sort of a fat ass with a big head. May I say that? I think I will. And he has this piece today, the worrisome pro-capital riot activism isn't a rally. It's in right-wing media. So, of course, he's attacking Fox. He's attacking yours truly. He cherry-picks what I say because he can't help it. He's a stupid, obsessed fool. Host Mark Levin is focused on the issue repeatedly, meaning what's happening I guess now it's about 600 people who've been picked up. In June, he told his audience that we're hearing that they're in some of the worst jails and some are being put in solitary confinement where they only have an hour where they can go outside if that, that they're being fed poor food, they're being treated like they're terrorists at Guantanamo Bay where they'd be treated actually better. He added that the events that day were not an insurrection. So this is what infuriates them. We must destroy people who disagree with us. I don't believe Phil Bump's been at the jail. I don't believe Phil Bump has gone over the charging documents. I don't believe Phil Bump has talked to a single one of these people who's in jail or their lawyers. But we're going to find out. We're going to bring in an expert, and she's going to come in here uh, really just in a few minutes, Julie Kelly, who provided a lot of the information that I and others have relied on. She's not alone in that. Uh, Easily accessible. But there's not a single specific fact of any sort in Philly Bump's piece. Because he's a hack. He's a fraud. He's a phony. Over there at the Washington Compost. Where if you don't get it, then you get everything else. Stick with us. You're not going to want to miss this. I'm in rare form today. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin.
Over 2,000 of you, my listeners, made the switch from overpriced wireless carriers to Pure Talk over the past few months. We want the rest of you to join us and to see what we're talking about. If you're with AT&T and Verizon or T-Mobile, your family could save over $800 a year just by switching to Pure Talk. You get great coverage, you can keep your phone and your number, and you'll save a fortune. Pure Talk is the top-rated wireless company by Consumer Affairs with the absolute best consumer service team based right here in America. Does that sound good? Well, it gets better. Right now, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data, just $30 a month. And if you go over on data, they don't charge you for it. They don't care. Go to puretalkusa.com. And enter promo code Levin Podcast. Again, puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin, L E V I N Podcast. And when you do, you'll save 50% off your first month. That's puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. Welcome back, America. We have a really fantastic writer and investigator, Julie Kelly, senior contributor, American Greatness. Julie, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. You know, when people do their little hit jobs, they don't understand. I hit back twice as hard. We have this guy, Phil Bump, national correspondent, Washington Compost. You spent a lot of time interviewing individuals in the jail from January 6th, interviewing their lawyers, going through the charging documents. To your knowledge, has this columnist for the Washington Post, Phil Bump, ever been to the jail? No. In fact, I doubt that he knows that the deplorable jail even exists. Uh, There's no indication in his column that he realizes that three dozen January 6th Capitol protesters are sitting in that jail, have been in that jail since February, and that there are dozens more at other jails across the country being denied bail simply because of their involvement in January 6th. He doesn't mention that in his article. Why do you think that is? Because he's a he, fraud. He's a, that's, that's right. That's Let's right. go he's on. He says here, um, host Mark Levin is focused on the issue repeatedly. In June, he told his audience that we're hearing that they're in some of the worst jails Some are being put in solitary confinement where they only have an hour where they can go outside of that, that they're being fed poor food, they're being treated like they're terrorists at Guantanamo Bay, where they'd be treated actually better. Is there something I said there that's inaccurate? No, and um, it's too bad that Philip Bump didn't listen to the Oath Keeper status hearing that I did today, where there are three Oath Keepers, none charged with violent crime. No weapons charged, no assaulting police officers, no direct vandalism, nothing. Ken Harrelson was arrested in February. He's been in the D.C. jail since last spring. And his lawyer today told Judge Maida the alarming physical and medical condition that Mr. Harrelson is in, that he has not had a shave or a haircut, that he has a medical condition he cannot get treatment for. Um, that, of course, the poor food, I'm hearing that they keep shutting off the hot water there, that they're flooding their cells. There have been reports of abuse uh, of at least one of the detainees. So Phil Bump should have listened to the Oath Keepers hearing today. There are three Oath Keepers who have been held, and their trial just got moved from January of 2022 to April of 2022. So they will be in jail, some of them, almost a year. That is correct. Yes. And Philip Bump, rather than find out what actually is taking place, and he works for the Washington Post, so you have to assume he's in or around Washington, D.C., if he got off his fat ass, he could actually go and see if he wants or try and find out what's taking place, but he doesn't. Now let's go on. He says, it's obviously true that Americans should be tried quickly to minimize unnecessary detention, and that those detentions should be humane, but... What do you mean, but? But it's important to remember that law enforcement didn't make many arrests on June 6, so most, most arrests came later, meaning that it wasn't true in July that most of those in detention had been there for six months. Did I say most of those in detention had been there for six months, Mr. Producer? 
One would also be justified in thinking that Levin is perhaps not expressing concerns about political prosecutions uniformly. In May 2020, he went on Sean Hannity's Fox News show to insist that officials from the Obama administration should be thrown in jail. You mean those officials who planted lies? You mean the FBI that tried to have a coup against a sitting president? You, you, see, you see the problem here, Julie, with these, with these Washington Post types. They throw in these, these cherry-picked arguments. They don't look at the whole argument. Did Philip Mob contact you to try and get any context for this story? No. I know, that, I know that probably shocks you, but no, he did not. But he knows I was referring to your writings. He knows I've had you on this show, I guess. He knows that you actually have got dirt under your fingernails digging into this like a real reporter where he's just sitting back and writing. Then he attacks Fox News. That Fox News and Republicans don't believe this election and on and on and on. It's shocking that we have Americans being treated this way by our so-called justice system and then we have a media that supports it, is it not? Oh, they absolutely do. I mean, they are cheering for this. And that's what Philip Bump basically said in his column uh, by, by dismissing the, uh, the reality that there are political prisoners, that this Justice Department continues every week to hunt down January 6th protesters and to arrest them, to charge them with ridiculous crimes like parading and picketing in, in Congress, ruining their lives. These people have lost everything, even charged with minor offenses. They've lost their jobs. They're being bankrupted. They're being humiliated and outcast in their communities. They will never get their lives back because their political props and Joe Biden's Justice Department and people like Philip Bump in the Washington Post because they want revenge against these people who doubt the legitimacy of the 2020 election and don't support Joe Biden. I'd like to keep you after the break, Julie Kelly, if you don't mind, senior contributor, American Greatness. I'm not done going through this with you, and I wanted to add a few more points, if you will. Thank you. We'll be right back. Mark Levin Show, the pool feed for the conservative media. Dive in now, 877-381-3811. I'm back with Julie Kelly, senior contributor, American Greatness. Julie Kelly has spent more time investigating and actually personally going to the jail, talking to defendants, talking to their lawyers, looking at the charging documents and so forth than any other person. And Philip Bump has done none of it. So if you're reading the Washington Post, you have no idea what's going on except Philip Bump's uninformed propaganda. We even had two federal judges, Julie, both appointed by Obama, who's, who raised concerns about the way certain people are being charged. They've raised the question like, wait a minute, you're charging people for disrupting Congress, when in fact we've had people disrupt Congress, You hit them with a misdemeanor or you let them go. You're charging these people with felonies if they don't plead to to an offense that you demand. And they're starting and they're saying, what is that based on? You've heard that, too, right? I have. So you're referring to Judge Moss and Judge Maida. Um, Judge Moss called the obstruction of an official proceeding felony, which this DOJ has slapped on at least 200 cases to turn Trump supporters into convicted felons. It's never been used in this way before. The judges know it. The government knows it. The defense lawyers certainly know it. Um, And so both of those lawyers have raised concern. Judge Moss said it has a constitutional vagueness problem. Uh, There is a motion in the Oath Keepers case, a motion to dismiss, and Judge Maida is considering that now and should make a ruling, should issue some ruling on that next month. Um, But again, Philip Bump, do you even know what the obstruction of an official proceeding charge is? It's origination, which was a post-Enron law uh, that was supposed to stop any interference in congressional investigations, not the certification of the Electoral College. So, you know, these are the things that Mr. Bump does not stay awake at night worrying about. I had a gentleman contact me. 
And uh, this gentleman said, I have a problem. I was told by the Department of Justice, my lawyer was, either I plead guilty to this federal misdemeanor and agree not to appeal, or I'm going to be charged with a felony along the lines you just discussed and go to trial, and I can't afford the lawyer. And not only that, I never entered the Capitol building. I was on the Capitol grounds. I didn't even know I was trespassing. That's right. And I don't believe this gentleman is alone, is he? He's certainly not. As I said, I think there are about 220 defendants who face this felony charge that have been applied to mostly misdemeanor offenses, such as parading or picketing, restricted access, disorderly conduct. Um, And so this, you know, just imagine for a minute, Mark, if that would have applied to the 2018 Kavanaugh protest, where they tried to not only shut down a Senate confirmation, but actually were banging on the Supreme Court doors trying to stop him from being sworn in. I mean, we would have had thousands of felons in that case. Um, But it's never been used that way. Only two January 6th defendants, which again, Philip Bump, that doesn't make them political prisoners or or that this is a political prosecution when you have such an egregious double standard of justice um now, let me let me tell you what this guy's doing let me tell you how diabolical uh, this propagandist is what he's thinking is or even hoping is that there's going to be violence in, in this other uh, rally that's occurring that i don't really know anything about Mm-hmm. And so if it occurs, what he wants to do is try and take out some hosts, try and take out Fox News, try and blame them. These are, these are incredibly dishonest and diabolical people, people like Philip Bump. He knows nothing about the facts. He doesn't take the time to dig into the facts. They're readily available, or he can go down and find out for himself. He can go to the courthouse and read charging documents. He can talk to defense lawyers. They typically would, you know, when we're dealing with terrorists, but not here. Then he writes in his column, in part, it's remarkable that even 10 months after the election, with precisely zero hard evidence of fraud that could shift the election outcome having emerged, most Republicans still say it happened. Now, what is amazing about this, Julie Kelly, is this is the same newspaper that pushed the Russia collusion narrative for almost three years in which a man was just charged, a lawyer, for trying to plant a lie with the FBI who lied about his connection to the Hillary Clinton and the DNC. He has no interest in any of this. We know the Russia collusion thing was a complete fraud. The media, including the Washington Post, promoted it, pushed it. And he dares to write a sentence like this. And I'll tell you something else. He'll never go to Pennsylvania because the challenges in Pennsylvania were purely constitutional under the federal constitution really had nothing to do with voting machines or ballots, nothing whatsoever. But they don't care, do they? They don't. And let's back up to what you just said. The Washington Post, as you know, Mark, in January of 2017, is the paper that leaked the classified phone call between Michael Flynn and uh, the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, to try to take down Flynn. The Washington Post is the paper that in April of 2017 leaked the FISA warrant against Carter Page to help destroy his life and promote this lie about Russian collusion. So they are, as you said, a propaganda organ. They don't care whose lives they destroy. They don't care what they're covering up. They don't care about the truth. They are simply there to promote whatever the Democrats tell them to and to cover up everything else. So I just want the American people to know, particularly the people in the Washington, D.C. area, what a fraud Philip Bump is and what a fraud the Washington Post is. You're not going to get actual information. They just push an agenda. This guy has no intent of being objective whatsoever. He has no intent of being a real journalist. He's covered. He's protected by the First Amendment. That's perfectly fine by me. But he's a clown. Talks about right-wing media. Right-wing media. There's never left-wing media. Right-wing media. So I I wanted to expose this fraud. Nobody better to do it than you. And I would urge Philly Bump to actually check out the conditions, talk to the defense lawyers, go look at the charging documents, actually educate yourself about what some of these judges are saying, think about the Constitution and due process and equal protection, which he won't because he's a slob. Julie Kelly, if people want to contact you, where do they go? 
Uh, I am on Twitter, Julie underscore Kelly, too. And my work can be found at American Greatness, amgreatness.com. And you do fantastic work. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, Mark. All right. Be well. That would be the same Washington Post, along with a cabal of other media that helped cover up the Holocaust, just so you know. They used to have an ad around the Washington, D.C. area here that said, if you don't get it, you don't get it. If you don't get it, you know a hell of a lot more than if you do get it. And then they had this ad that said, democracy dies in darkness. They put it on TV, Mr. Producer, during the Trump administration. Now, democracy dies when you have propaganda operations like the Washington Post and losers like Philip Bump. A fraud. A fraud. You hear me, pal? I said you're a fraud. Because you are. If you haven't read chapter 6 in American Marxism, you really should. I mean, I really nail these guys. They are exactly what I say they are. Or even Unfreedom of the Press, an entire book on the subject. But if you go to page 201, I write here, People in a culture or society in decline, which ceases to be a unifying and civil society and where the just social order unravels, are highly susceptible to believing and following dangerous fictions, even if they lead to their own demise. Now those who contribute to this, if not overwhelmingly contribute to it, are the media today. Are the media today. The media today support totalitarian and Marxist movements. They celebrate them. You can see this Stephen Colbert with Schumer. You can see. And this, this, is, this is what you see before, you know, an aggressive form of totalitarianism. And so what we have here are propaganda organizations. And Philip Bump is one of them. The Washington Post is one of them. And so they, they cleverly manipulate events to promote causes and agendas. Daniel Borstein wrote about this, librarian of the United States uh, Congress, as I've talked to you about before, professor of history, University of Chicago, half a century ago. He said, at first it may seem strange that the rise of pseudo-events, and I'm not saying January 6th with a pseudo-event, but insurrection, yeah, that's a lie has coincided with the growth of the professional ethic which obligates newsmen to omit editorializing of personal judgments from their news accounts. But now it's in the making of these events that newsmen find ample scope for their individuality and creative imagination. This is the same Washington Post that employs this slob that if true, and I have to say if true, because Woodward has a reputation, if true, Woodward and Costa, sat on news that the American people needed to have, that our representatives needed to have, that our men and women in uniform needed to have. They will have sat on it for at least three months, including the Washington Post. S- news, if it's true, it's, it's massive. If it's true. So there are two authors. Woodward and Costa could make a buck. That's the kind of so-called journalism we're dealing with today, ladies and gentlemen. And then the Washington Post writes an article about what the reporters have in their book. You believe that, Mr. Producer? Unbelievable. You should boycott the book. And you should boycott the Washington Post. Most of you don't get it anyway. These are corporations, and the people who work for them are propagandists. It's that simple. Because Philip Bump wrote a piece based on nothing he investigated on his own. He must have spent hours going through Mark's radio. We have it up. Anybody can listen to it. But when it comes to getting the facts about what Mark's talking about, or Julie Kelly, more importantly, is talking about, that he didn't investigate. 
That he didn't investigate. Or his trashing of Fox. And his trashing of Peter Ducey a week or two ago. You actually have the media attacking the media. So if you don't go along with Philip Bump, if you don't go along with the Washington Post, if you don't go along with the New York Times and all the rest of them, you're to be attacked and destroyed and character assassinated. And if something horrible happens and you didn't go along with them, it's on you. Or if you're Larry Elder and you're going to run against the system and you want to run legitimately, you want to run a substantive campaign, now we're going to trash your race. We're going to dig up background. We're going to talk to your ex-girlfriend from 20 years ago. We're going to look at an article you wrote 21 years ago. They don't do it to Biden. They never did it to Obama. They don't do it to Newsom, not to Pelosi, none of them. American Marxism on display. I want to encourage you to go to Amazon.com. We're going to try and squeeze out one more week at number one. One more week. And we want to get to a million. We need an army of a million. That's what we're aiming for. An army of a million. Those of you who have it, please give it to your friends. Get a copy for your family. Now's the time. It's all coming to a head in the next week or two on Capitol Hill. Massive amnesty. Destroying our electoral system. Massive expansion of freebies for people who haven't earned them. Undermining business, including small business. Taxing anybody who earns $30,000 or more. That's right, and I'm going to get to that too. You won't read that in the Washington Compost. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Over 2,000 of you, my listeners, made the switch from overpriced wireless carriers to Pure Talk over the past few months. We want the rest of you to join us and to see what we're talking about. If you're with AT&T and Verizon or T-Mobile, your family could save over $800 a year just by switching to Pure Talk. You get great coverage, you can keep your phone and your number, and you'll save a fortune. Pure Talk is the top-rated wireless company by Consumer Affairs with the absolute best consumer service team based right here in America. Does that sound good? Well, it gets better. Right now, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data, just $30 a month. And if you go over on data, they don't charge you for it. They don't care. Go to puretalkusa.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast. Again, puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin, L-E-V-I-N Podcast. And when you do, you'll save 50% off your first month. That's puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. Just look at the corruption. This is from Hot Air, LA Times. Our recall system needs to be fixed in California so Republicans can't win. Just the News reports, Georgia's largest county considers Stacey Abrams lobbyist for top election job. Which is supposed to be nonpartisan. New York Post, Democrats look to cut half of New York's GOP House members under gerrymandering. So here you have a state losing population. And they intend to pick up, if they can, three more seats by blowing out Republicans. You see that, Mr. Producer? Corrupt. So corrupt. And their media are so disgustingly corrupt. Breitbart, Senate Democrats try power grab with another federal takeover of elections. Fox News, and I went into this deeply with you. Dark Money Network gives top Democrat lawyer nearly unlimited funding for voting rights, quote-unquote, lawsuits, Watchdog says. Dark Money, federal takeover, state elections, trying to blow out the Republicans in New York by gerrymandering, putting Stacey Abrams' hack in Georgia's largest county to oversee elections, and the L.A. Times saying, let's get rid of this recall system so the Republicans can never try this again. American Marxism. They hate competition. They hate liberty. They hate individualism. They want the system to be fixed. I don't mean reformed. Fixed. So only they can win and only their agenda can be advanced. 
And the Washington Post is an operation of scoundrels. Just like the New York Times and the rest of the big media in this country. They're scoundrels. They know exactly what they're doing. They write to each other. They don't write news. They write spin. And this is what Donald Trump was up against. And by the way, this is what Ronald Reagan was up against too. We're covering a lot of ground. Because a lot of ground needs to be covered. By the way, hat tip to my buddy Dan Bongino. There's a guy... There's a guy who is honorable, gives credit where credit is due, and I try to do exactly the same thing. He's a good man. He's a good man. Does a great show. All right, where the hell was I? Oh, next hour, ladies and gentlemen. Joe Biden read a speech about what he wants to do to our economy, which is destroy it. And then after he gave a speech in front of the gaggle of reporters, he turned around and walked out. Excuse me, turned around and shuffled out wouldn't take any questions well this will affect your IRAs your pensions this will affect your savings this will affect the value of your income union non-union whomever you are I hope you'll focus on this because I'm not done we'll be right back Ladies and gentlemen, this final hour of the podcast is sponsored exclusively by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we care about, faith, family, and freedom. Thank you for listening, and please support AMAC. And you can become a member at amac.us slash join. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building we've once again made contact with our leader Mark Levin Hello America, Mark Levin here our number 877-381-3811 877-381-3811 Joe Biden gave one of his speeches today, and then he walks off, shuffles off, actually, without taking a question. And I can sum it up for you, although I had Mr. Producer, sorry there, Rich, pull clip after clip, we just don't have time. Joe Biden is using the language of Marxism. He says, the wealthy don't pay their fair share. Let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen. Who are the robber barons in this country today? Who are the robber barons? The president, the vice president, and the members of Congress. There's no one company in this country or no collection of companies that have a more powerful, richer monopoly than the federal government. The federal government has more employees, gives out more grants and loans, is the biggest tenant, the biggest landlord, the biggest property owner, the biggest consumer in the world. Not a single company in this country or a single industry in this country can compete. Moreover, that same federal government has the power of lawmaking. Nobody in the private sector has the power of lawmaking. And finally, this is all done to empower the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party wants to be the permanent single party with control over local, state, and federal power. Everything the Democrat Party does is to empower the Democrat Party. Notice also, please, that there's not a single Democrat or media figure or Marxist academic who refers to the bureaucracy in a negative way. In a negative way. Never. 
Because they are the bureaucracy. They are the bureaucracy. The bureaucracy almost never leaks on a Democrat president or Democrat administration. You'll rarely find a whistleblower coming out of the bureaucracy challenging a Democrat policy or Democrat spending bill. Period. The Democrat Party expands the bureaucracy, immunizes the bureaucracy from merit and accountability. They did this in California. They do it in all the state governments. They do it here better than anywhere else, Washington, D.C. They take money. You know, driving in the car with my wife the other day, we're driving her from uh, Reagan Airport. The construction never ends around here. It never ends. I live about 40 miles away from Washington, D.C. The construction comes all the way out here and beyond. Roads are being widened. Bypasses are being built. It never ends. The Washington subway comes all the way out to Loudoun County. Subsidized, of course. Even the private sector, the federal contractors and big tech, you ought to see the massive buildings and facilities in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. that are being built. I've read or I've heard 80% of all Internet traffic comes through Loudoun County, Virginia. And I know where you ought to see these buildings. They're, They're bigger than football fields. They have no windows. They're just massive. And by the way, how stupid. They're all congregated in the same area just so the communist Chinese know where to hit us. But anyway. And so the Washington suburbs now are the wealthiest parts of the country with the least amount of private sector industry. Because your money is laundered through Washington and the Washington suburbs. We have open borders. Now, I want you to think about this. If Joe Biden, for four years, is able to keep those borders open, we're going to have 10 million illegal aliens in four years, on top of another probably 20, 25 million illegal aliens, at the same time, while we're massively expanding the welfare state. Free community college, which will lead to free college, trust me. Twelve weeks of family leave. Twelve weeks. Massive expansion of Medicare, both the numbers of people and the benefits, which is going broke in two to four years, according to the trustees. Not me. What do I know? According to them. Where is that going to come from? Medicaid is on its last leg. Social Security is on its last leg. And we're le- right now, Fox News has shown a drone with 10,000 Haitians who've come into the country illegally under the international bridge on the border with Texas. And they're under the bridge because they have nowhere to go. They're in the United States. Luckily, they're not Cubans or they throw them to the sharks in the ocean. Right, Mr. Producer? If you come from Haiti, which is half of an island, arms wide open. If you come from Cuba, uh, you go back. Anyway, that just shows you the the disgusting cynicism of this whole thing. And we're not importing people who are going to be contributing to the tax base. And the Democrat Party knows it, ladies and gentlemen. The Democrat Party is ground zero for the American Marxist movements. It embraces all of them. The Latcrit movement, the CRT movement, the degrowth movement, you name it. The anti-capitalism movement. If Joe Biden has his way, corporations will be paying a higher income tax rate than in communist China. If Joe uh, Biden has his way, Not just corporations, but you will be paying a higher capital gains tax rate than in communist China. Why would you punish American entrepreneurship and business that creates jobs 
creates a lot of the things that you enjoy, including your pharmaceuticals and your automobiles and so forth, to make us uncompetitive with communist China. They're going to kill jobs. They're going to drive up inflation. They're going to kill your pensions. They're going to kill your salaries. That's what happens when you debase a currency, and that's what they're doing. And all through his speech, he was using Marxist propaganda. Mark, what are you talking about? It's about time people on radio and TV used real language to describe what's going on here. These are power grabs. It's not purely economic. These are power grabs, which includes economic. But he uses the class warfare. And he lies about it. Oh, you know, the uh, top 1% really don't pay any. I'm in the top 1%. I pay almost 50% of every dollar I earn to taxes, federal, state, and local. He's a liar. We know the statistics show. They follow the science and follow the data. He doesn't follow science and data. The guy's busy walking in the walls. He's a liar. He's a propagandist. He's a demagogue. He always has been, even when he had an IQ of seven. Of course, that's no longer the case. The top 1%, I hate to tell you, pay 40% of the federal income taxes. The bottom 50% pay nothing. And the bottom 30% get money back even though they don't pay any taxes. And the Democrats want to expand that. Why? Is it good for the economy? Is it good for the soul? Is it good for the psychology of the country? Is it going to create jobs? Is it going to create wealth and opportunity and growth for more? No. It's going to create Democrats. That's what they want. That's why I say they're not adversaries. They're not opponents. They're the enemy. When we come back, I'm going to bring on Larry Kudlow to help work through this with us. What is it, Rich? But before I do, I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead, A-M-A-C dot U-S. Well, it's a pleasure to have my friend Larry Kudlow, the Fox Business Channel. I'm looking here where, Larry, where the Joint Committee on Taxation has looked at at least some of these proposals and said, actually, people making as little, putting inflation aside, as $30,000 a year would be subject to tax hikes. Clearly, people who have farms and ranches or private property could well be subject to uh, additional taxes as well, should the person who owns and their father, their parents, whatever... Uh, die, or uh, if they want to pass it on to their children. Give us some idea of how actually horrific this is. <laughs> how much time do we have? Not enough. Not enough. Well, look, you know, this, his speech today was just the usual left-wing progressive tap. He wants to level the playing field. It's all about class warfare. We're going to take from the rich who, of course, don't pay their fair share of taxes. And we're going to give all these new government welfare programs. And by the way, not a single one of those programs has a work requirement or an education requirement. 
So it'll be completely dependent on the state. The worst part of it to me is just the factual lies, Mark, to say that you have lots of corporations who don't pay any taxes, lots of rich people, quote unquote, who don't pay enough taxes, their fair share, and we have to level the playing field. Look, at, I don't want to level the playing field. I want to raise the playing field. I want to expand the pie. I want ordinary middle-income blue-collar wage earners to get more wages, to have better equipment and technology so they can be more productive. Then their family incomes will go up, all of which happened following the Trump tax cut. The Biden tax increases are going to reverse everything here. I mean, it's just the idea that $400,000 uh, nobody under $400,000 is going to pay higher taxes. Well, think about this. First of all, the Joint Tax Committee shows that that's untrue, that people – there's a little bit – you're right, at the low end, the 30000 That has something to do with the implementation of the child tax credit. But the main thing here is people around $100,000 or $200,000, $300,000, you know, you're talking about – Families, our, families we're talking about. It could be two incomes. That's right. That's right. You're it could be a farm. small business. That's right. That's exactly right. You know, a fireman and a nurse, okay, a teacher and a cop, uh, a couple that runs a store, they will pay higher taxes here because uh, they're going to get picked up in the tax in the in- income tax hike, or their small business now has to pay the Obamacare net investment tax, or the 20 percent deduction that they got uh, in the 2017 bill is being taken away. I mean, Mark, the hardest hit group in this policy coming out of the Ways and Means Committee and the Biden administration wants more of it, not less. The hardest hit group is the small business, mm. the heartbeat of America. They're the hardest hit group. They're going to have to pay a higher rate, lose their deduction. Uh, have to pay this stupid investment tax that ca- as a carryover years ago in 2010 from Obamacare. And um, they're also going to have to pay a higher capital gains tax. And if they ever sell the business, they're going to have to pay the unrealized capital gains. So this is insanity. The very people that the Democratic Party says they're going to help, which is the ordinary average workforce family, they get hurt the most. And to say that businesses aren't paying their fair share is just wrong. It is a lie. A lie. Now, now, Larry Kudlow, isn't this really, they like to frame the narrative as the rich versus the middle class. Isn't this really the robber barons and big government devouring as much as the private sector as they possibly can? Well, look... <laughs> They want to control the economy. This is all about a statist vision. They want to, I mean, actually, you know, to your book and your work on Marxism, they basically want to take over the means of production. I mean, this is real old line Marxism Hmm. in a couple of industries. uh, Energy is one of them and healthcare is another. Now, they, they may seek out more of this. But this is real old line Soviet communism type stuff. And, you know, I don't I don't think people are going to buy it. I mean, look, you can I just this whole issue of profit Mm -hmm. like on the left. Profits are a dirty word. Companies never pay enough right on taxes on their profits. And we've had a tremendous surge in profits, which is boosting the stock market which is boosting the wealth of about 125 million Americans. Practically half of the workforce is invested in the market. Look, at, let's take a company. I'm going to kill the corporate tax. I'm going to jack it up from 21% to 21.6% domestically. I'm going to charge you a 15% minimum tax, which means your expensing provisions for new equipment technology will be no good. And on top of that, If you do any international business at all, I'm going to charge you another minimum tax that will probably be as high as... All right, hold it right there. Got a hard break. You know this business. If you can, let's let's, uh, let's stay over for the next segment. Okay. All right. 
We've got a lot more to cover here. This is going to affect each and every one of your lives in a very, very negative way. I'll be right back. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead. A-M-A-C dot U-S. The Mark Levin Show, where we create the talking points. Call in now, 877-381-3811. When you want to understand economics, and especially what they're trying to do to you in Washington, the go-to guy is my buddy Larry Kudlow of the Fox Business Channel. Now, Larry, how does all of this affect, we talk about the middle class, how does this all affect Uh, the middle class, what Biden's trying to do. Is it going to improve their wages? Is it going to improve their their savings? Is it going to improve their job stability and so forth? It's going to do great damage. And I just wanted to spend a moment on this issue of profits, corporate profits, Mm -hmm. which Biden wants to tax more heavily and reverse the Trump tax cuts. So look, you want a good paying job, you need a good business, you need a stable business. If you're taxing their profits away, what does that mean? That means they don't have enough money to keep the business growing. They don't have enough money to keep paying good higher wages. They don't have enough money to find the equipment to increase productivity. You cannot operate mark without profits profits are the mother's milk of stocks and like i say there's 125 million americans in the stock market it's not 10 billionaires okay it's a half of the working population are in the stock market but the bigger point is wages wages you raise the corporate tax you lower profits that means you have to lower wages that's what the business has to do to stay alive or until the business goes extinct. Now, here's the big lie. The big lie that Biden made again today, and it's part of the old left rift, is that companies either don't pay any taxes or companies pay too little in taxes. They don't pay their, quote, fair share. Well, they do. I beg your pardon. We have had a profits boom post-pandemic. Tax revenues are rolling in, Mark. The government is rolling in cash right now, okay? So who's going to suffer? A hundred, listen to this, a hundred billion dollars in profits for the S&P 500 companies, the biggest companies. A hundred billion will be lost as a result of Biden's tax hike. And that means, that means all the wages will have to go down not up because these companies are going to lose this enormous amount of money. This tax bill, if it goes through, will wipe out roughly one half of all profits. Can you imagine that? No. And he says that with a straight face. So it lowers growth. It lowers jobs. They can't hire anybody. It lowers wages and it lowers productivity. And it is 70 percent, 70 percent of the burden of a corporate tax hike is paid for in the form of lower wages for ordinary average Americans, you know, earning whatever, 100000 a year. If it's a family, 150000 or 200000 a year. 
That's what you're giving up here, and that's what the left will not tell you. Unbelievable. I want to hit another another part of this. Go ahead. Transactions over $600. Biden wants the IRS to be able to track transactions of people over $600 out of their bank accounts? Inflows and outflows. Can you imagine this? No. And the Treasury and the IRS are fighting hard to get it. Inflows and outflows. I mean, this is Big Brother watching you like never before. And you know why? They think everybody's cheating. They think this is all a bunch of tax cheats, so they want to get paid. But, Larry, I want everybody to understand you don't have to be rich. If you've got $600 coming in or $600 coming out, right now the IRS doesn't have the power to be monitoring that. Biden wants to give them the power to monitor it. He wants to increase the IRS budget from $12 billion to $20 billion. He wants to double the personnel there from about 75000 to about 130000 I mean, this is going to be some hell of a police state, in my view. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That's what this is about. It gives the IRS, I mean, this is lowest learner to the hundredth power is what you got here. They want to monitor all this for two reasons, Mark. One of them is they think they're going to find tax cheats, which has been proven time and again to be false. By the way, even the CBO says you're not going to make any money on going after tax cheats. Number two, this is political. They want to monitor you because you are a conservative and they don't like your views and they will go after your company. They'll go after your business. They'll go after your um, uh, political, fa- political foundation, your nonprofit, your church, anything. That's what they want to know so they can go after you. These will be political decisions, like Lois Lerner was monitoring all the 501c3s and 501c4s. The same old story. Big brother. And then they want to expand entitlements while these trustees are saying they're going broke. Medicare in two to four years. They want to expand the benefits and expand the people who can get Medicare. So the damn thing's going to collapse if there's not trillions inputted into these funds. And then that creates massive inflation, right? Well, it also create massive poverty because they're going to have to raise the payroll tax, the Social Security payroll tax, and the health insurance section astronomically. I mean, this is, you know, this is the great left-wing giveaway. They want to take over the health care system. I mean, they're going after, like, Medicare wants to now monitor all the drug prices, and they also want to tie drug prices to some goofy European uh, health price. Uh, now, what will that do? Well, Tell you know what it'll do? Take the pharmaceutical, the drug companies. The drug companies in six months under Operation Warp Speed created a miracle vaccination. In six months, not ten years, six months. That vaccination saved the country. It saved the country from more misery, more hospitalization, and more death. It also saved the country because it enabled us to reopen all those small businesses, okay, that were going under. Now, in return for that, the way they say thank you is to come crashing down to control the drug prices, to raise their taxes. They expect to make $700 billion more on this assault on all of the health care companies, all the pharmaceuticals, all the biotechs, who, Mark, are generating miracle cure drugs, miracles, including the vaccination. And, you know, we live longer, we live better, et cetera, et cetera. They will go after that. And they want to turn us, you know, a European-style uh, national health care service. All right, last like question, that. Larry. Last, last question. This has been tried everywhere. You talk about Europe in a more aggressive form. It's been tried in, uh, in these, these various Marxist socialist regimes. Uh, it's been tried everywhere. It impoverishes people, takes their liberty away. They don't create new technologies. They don't create new drugs. They're not creating jobs. Um, inflation. So it's not like this is a first try. I mean, we have these countries that have tried it, and it's been an utter disaster. So why would we swap the greatest economic system on the face of the world for the worst? Well, you have a choice. You can go for big government socialism, or you can go from free enterprise capitalism. That's going to be the choice. When Joe Biden says, I want to level the playing field, 
What he's really telling you is, I want to level your incomes. I want to level your wages. I want to level our growth. And I don't like that because I want to increase growth and wages. I want to increase jobs, not destroy them. I want more free enterprise businesses, not fewer. And this is part of the left-wing class warfare. This is all about political values, Mark. This is all about this woke left. Last question. Stuff. Well, what happens to liberty when all these economic decisions are made by the government? Well, I ask you, if you have a government-run economy, all right, a government-run economy, will you have more freedom or less freedom? Will you have more competition or less competition? The answer is less, 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 less across the board. That's what they want, a government-run economy. They don't want people to have work incentives, Mark. They'd rather they live their lives on welfare off of the government. And by the way, just as a throwaway, the new tax structure being promoted will give China lower, significantly lower taxes than the United States. Is that what we want Truly, is that what we want, to lose the competitive battle to China just because of a bunch of left-wing, woke theories that unfortunately more and more look like straight-out Marxism? Is that what we want? I don't think so. I don't think so either. It's a disaster. They want to kill the the goose that lays the golden eggs, and they still want the golden Mm -hmm. eggs. Well, it doesn't work that way, does it, Larry? You know, the Journal wrote a good editorial a couple weeks ago. Bernie Sanders is running out of billionaires to attack mm-hmm. to finance his welfare state. <laughs> they made the calculations. They're up to $450 billion, and that's not enough because this bill is $6 trillion when it's counted for properly. So, you know, this will be devastating to the economy. So everybody should call their members of Congress and the Senate and the House and make it clear And just remember, this is the same human pandemic in Joe Biden. Everything he's touched, he's destroyed. The border, Afghanistan, our finances, um, just everything he touches, he turns inside out. Larry Kudlow, tell everybody when they can catch your show. Save America, kill the bill. The show is at 4 p.m. We're clobbering the competition, and we welcome everybody at 4 p.m. It's fantastic. You're terrific, my man. God bless you. You too, Mark. Love, love, love. Thank you. You too. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead, A-M-A-C dot U-S. Folks, please don't forget to get your copy of American Marxism. You can go on Amazon.com right now. It's number nine on the list. Got a lot of novels ahead of it. You've got this book, Peril, uh, by Woodward and Costa. That's their problem. Um, We're in week 10. Week 10. And if you haven't gotten your copy, please now grab it. It's still 40% off. It's weird. It was $16.80. Now it's $16.74. I don't know what that's about. But that's good. Do your family members have it? Your friends? I want you to think about Thanksgiving. I want you to think about all these periods because now it's heavily discounted. Now it's available. And we're about to hit the million mark. 
So I want to encourage you to join this movement as fast as possible. If your kids are already in college, get them copies. They're going into high school. They're going to high school. Get them copies. You know what we're up against. If you have a neighbor who's kind of on the fence, I'm telling you, people come to me. I'm happy to sign them when I see them. Uh, And so we want to keep pushing this out, pushing this out. You're part of a movement. You're part of an intellectual movement, an ideas movement, and an activist movement. That's the nature of the book. That's why it's so unique. Take a look at the comments on Amazon. I think we're at, how many comments are there? Holy mackerel, there's 13,231 comments, five stars overall. So please jump in and join us. And if you're a trucker or you're a cab driver, or you're, you're a Lyft or Uber or whatever, get the audio. Get the audio. The audio has been doing very, very well, better than most uh, nonfiction books. So please jump in. Spread the word. We're going to push as hard as we can this final week or two. Not that it's the final week or two, but this week or the next two. So I'm encouraging you, if you can, all you Levinites, all you patriots. A lot of you have jumped in. Still a lot of not. Come on. We need your help. I know I've been very bad. I haven't taken any calls. But, hell, we've had a lot, a lot of ground to cover here. And so uh, I want to thank you all very, very much. Let's take a couple of calls. We're not going to have a ton of time. Robbie, Los Angeles, California, 870 The Answer. Go right ahead, please. Hey, Mark. First off, I just want to say it's an honor to speak to you after so many years of listening to you. Um, Thank you, sir. My grandma actually introduced me to to, uh, you and Rush Limbaugh, so it's an honor. Um, Thank you. I wanted to uh, get your advice. Um, I'm a lineman with IBEW, um, and I average about... 200 to 225 a year and as it is now um i already pay about 2300 dollars a week in taxes and my fear is going forward um i'm scared that it's just going to get to the point where i don't bring anything home and i wanted to ask your advice on how can i protect myself and my family because my wife doesn't work and i've got two kids um what should I be doing as a 30-year-old to protect myself? This is a great question. I'm not a financial advisor, but let me tell you what I did. <coughs> Excuse me. When I wasn't earning a lot of money, I would take an amount of money. What, do you get paid every two weeks? Uh, biweekly, yeah. Okay. What I used to do is take a certain amount and put it away in a mutual fund, although now with stocks going hot and cold, you may want to put it in a, in a safer bet. But I'm just saying, no matter what, I would take a certain amount. Now, back then, I was taking $150 every two weeks, so $300 a month. And I did it for 20 years, and it adds up fast. I think it wound up being $60,000, $70,000, and I really didn't pay attention to it because I automatically deducted it. And so you can grow money that way. I'm just giving an idea of what I did. And uh, that money was for my kids. and, uh, And when they got a certain age... You know, I gave it to them to put towards a home and that sort of thing. So, or for their college, you can use it that way too. That's something I would recommend. It's rather simple. But again, I'm not a, I'm not a finance guy. That's what I personally did. The other problem you have is you're in California. You know, it's a heavy, heavy tax state. It is really a tyrannical state. You've got four or five states in this country where they don't even have an income tax, like Tennessee and Florida and Texas, and I think Washington State, maybe one other, I just uh, can't recall. Something to think about. I mean, you do have a good job there, so you've got to weigh that. Robbie, don't hang up. We're going to send you a signed copy of American Marxism. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish I could send you each a signed copy, but I can't. So please go get your own copy tonight. Amazon.com. I'll meet you there in five minutes. And we salute all you heroes out there. Thanks for listening. I'll be here tomorrow. See you then.